No Jerry Anderson series would be complete without its star vehicles and spectacular model effect sequences. However, all of these classic vehicles can trace their lineage back to 1958 and this. Torchy the Battery Boy's sparkler-powered rocket could hardly be said to be a standout Anderson vehicle, but it served the same vital function that every classic vehicle of the Super Mario Nation era ultimately would. It got the show's puppet characters from A to B in style. It was during production on Supercar in 1960 that a full-fledged special effects and model department was first created at AP Films. In charge of this unit was Derek Meddings, who had begun his Anderson career as a set designer and matte painter on 1957's The Adventures of Twizzle. Under his leadership, supported by Anderson's aim to create increasingly realistic and dynamic puppet series, the show's visual effects enjoyed a rapid evolution over the next few years. With Fireball XL5 came a greater emphasis on action, which meant more vehicles and more explosions. The effects team quickly learned lessons that would serve them well on future productions, such as shooting at high speed to give explosions and water a greater sense of scale. And the lessons learned on these black and white shows would carry forward into the color era with Stingray and Thunderbirds. Both series featured an array of star vehicles, but also frequently spotlighted impressive and memorable guest vehicles, with many of the show's most spectacular moments involving one or more of them becoming embroiled in explosive disaster. Fire flash, overshoot, overshoot! Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons, and later UFO, would also present an array of classic hero vehicles, while Joe 90 and the Secret Service maintained the tradition of impressive guest craft and spectacular explosions. Anderson's 1969 feature film Doppelganger was even nominated for a special effects Oscar. Derek Meddings was fast becoming a major player in the special effects industry, so much so that by the beginning of production on Space 1999 in 1973, he was unavailable to work on the series, being otherwise occupied with major feature films such as the James Bond franchise. Instead, Anderson turned to Brian Johnson, special effects director on 2001 A Space Odyssey and former effects technician on Thunderbirds. Across two seasons and 48 episodes, Johnson and his team at Bray Studios created spectacular effect sequences for Space 1999, every bit as impressive as Meddings would have done, with the show's star vehicle the Eagle Transporter being for many people the highlight of the entire series. After completion of Space 1999, it would be seven years before Anderson would produce another television series. And again, he had to find a new special effects director. For Terrorhawks, the role would fall to Steve Begg, who designed the show's vehicles and also created spectacular effect sequences comparable to Space 1999's on a fraction of the budget. Begg would later work on other Anderson productions, most notably serving as special effects director on Space Precinct, and has since gone on to work on such major films as Batman Begins, Kingsman, and the Daniel Craig James Bond films. Now, over 30 years on from working on his first Anderson series, and with a wealth of experience behind him, Steve Begg joined the crew of Jerry Anderson's Firestorm as effects supervisor, director, and associate producer. His unique knowledge of practical and digital effects will allow Firestorm to bring back the magic of Century 21 to a 21st century audience. Now, after the successful completion of the series Proof of Concept Minisode, Anderson Entertainment is working to bring a brand new world of fantastic vehicles and exciting model effect sequences to a modern audience, with a full series of Jerry Anderson's Firestorm.